America's first great awakening finds its seeds here in Savannah, Georgia. It's here in 1736 that John and Charles Wesley accepted the invitation of General James Oglethorpe to come to Savannah and serve as the parish chaplain. The Wesleys had just finished their time at Oxford University, where they had formed a deep friendship with George Whitfield and several others in what came to be known as the Holy Club. It was that friendship that God would ultimately use to bring awakening in both America and in England. The journey from England to the colonies was not an easy one. The ship encountered a severe storm at sea. It was a terrifying experience for everyone on board. The ship pitched and tossed in the rough seas while the wind and the rain was relentless. However, Wesley noticed that one group remained at perfect peace. It was a group of Moravians fleeing Europe and coming to the new land in search of religious freedom. Somehow these families had a faith and a contentment that Wesley did not possess. They sat peacefully singing songs and psalms through the storm. That moment had a profound effect on Wesley. Shortly after arriving in March of 1736, Wesley preached his very first sermon here. However, his time here in Savannah would be shorter than he had planned. Wesley wasn't popular with many of the populists. His mission's work amongst the Native Americans was unfruitful. Even his brother Charles abandoned him six months into the endeavor, returning back to England. When Wesley wasn't ministering, he would retreat outside of town to be with the Moravians. It was his time with them that led him to question the state of his own soul. It could be said that Wesley's Methodism was being proven during his time here in the colonies. Sadly, after less than two years, Wesley would abandon his dreams here in Savannah and return home to England. On the passage back, Wesley recorded in his journal, I came to convert the Indians, but oh, who will convert me? Thankfully, this isn't the end of the story for Wesley, England, or America. Shortly after returning to England, Wesley would have a powerful encounter with the Lord. It's an experience that he wrote about and said it seemed as though his heart were strangely warmed. It was a conversion experience that would propel Wesley from being the failed minister in Savannah to England's preeminent voice during the Great Awakening. Now back in the US, it was one of Wesley's friends from the old Oxford Holy Club that would continue the work. Wesley had invited George Whitfield to come over to Savannah and to work alongside him in the parish and the native people. After Wesley's departure, Whitfield became the parish chaplain. Whitfield was a bold man who detested lukewarm Christianity. To him, it was worse than no faith at all. Whitfield contended that the only kind of faith that pleased God was a fervent, fiery faith, and that was the message that Whitfield preached. His message was rejected in the churches in England. They considered his style to be too sacrilegious for their holy services. So Whitfield took to the open fields where he would preach to whomever would hear him. Though he was rejected in England, he found the colonies to be far more welcoming. Whitfield was a gifted orator who mesmerized his audiences using a voice in the manner of a skilled actor. He was a master for storyteller, a skill that he used in his preaching. Once he described a storm in such detail that a sailor in the audience cried out, to the lifeboats, to the lifeboats. It wasn't uncommon for people to fall under conviction. They fall to the floor as though dead in wailing and in tears and in cries of repentance. Whitfield began to take his message across the colonies. It was these open air meetings that were the first mass evangelistic crusades in America. This became the match that would light the fire of America's great awakening. During his lifetime, Whitfield delivered more than 18,000 sermons to 10 million people. Consider that feat in a time when there's no television or mass communication. Whitfield had a profound effect on men like Jonathan Edwards and David Brainerd. These men would be used to spread the fires of awakening. He also had an influence on many of our founding fathers. Whitfield and Benjamin Franklin would become dear friends. Franklin even purchased a meeting house for Whitfield to preach after his friend was barred from preaching in a local church. He cannot deny the religious history of America. I contend that it's impossible to understand the founding of our nation without first studying the Great Awakening in which it was born. You have to understand the messages the founding fathers were sitting under in their churches, the fires in which they themselves were touched by to understand the language of the Declaration of Independence or our Constitution. God used this great revival to draw the colonies into a closer union. The Great Awakening was the one event that all the colonies shared in common. It was, like in the days of Pentecost, a great unifying factor. Today, America stands in need of a greater awakening. You know, when you stand here, you find yourself at a spot and you see something truly encouraging. Wesley came with dreams of a great ministry, but he thought that he failed. Yet this town and this nation is marked by his short time here. God used what seemed to be a tragedy for his own triumph. It's just like Romans 8:28 says, that we know all things work to the good of those that love him according to his purposes.